This is Lucille, and she is awesome. Shields up, Ironbreakers. We're kind of here coming at you with another video, and today we're going to be talking about Monster Hunter World. More specifically, we're going to be talking about another one of my Gunlance builds. Now, this build is called Lucille, and you guys will be figuring out exactly why in just a couple of moments. The credit for the name actually goes to Alvin Kadachi from my live stream. That is an excellent name for this build, dude, because if you guys pay attention, the weapon that we're using, which is called Eradication Flame, is also wrapped around in barbed wire, very much like Negan's bat, which is also called Lucille. And basically, just like Negan's bat, the whole point of Lucille is to beat the crap out of monsters and you don't actually use shelling you're just gonna beat the crap out of them with melee attacks so in a way I, I, I said a while back that I didn't really consider Nergigante's gun lance to be a gun lance it's more like a hammer or in this case a bat and that's what we're gonna be doing we're gonna be taking a bat to the face of Teostra and it's gonna be good times so let me go over the build here with you guys so naturally the weapon is Eradication Flame, coming in with a base attack damage of 483, which uh, out of all the gun lances in the tree, it is the one with the highest base attack damage. However, once you get to augmenting levels, there is one gun lance that can surpass Eradication Flame in um, raw damage significantly. And that is the Baroth's Gun Lance because you can augment it three times, increasing its attack by 12 three times, so an additional uh, 36 attack. And to top it off, that particular Gun Lance can be Elementless, which means you can reach a base attack damage of around 545 or something like that, which is pretty beast. Pretty beast, but I'm really not willing to invest all that many augments into uh, another Gun Lance just for the sake of having ridiculous amounts of raw damage. However, the bear off, if you guys are willing to go that route, the bear off also has viable shelling. So keep that in mind. You can actually shell with that gun lance as well because it's wide shelling level three. But anyway, back on the track for, for this particular build. Uh, so eradication flame, mostly because of its raw damage, which is why the bear off buster can also be used. It's also got 0% affinity, which means that you can build for affinity and therefore get yourself a whole bunch of crits. It's got Dragon Element and Elder Seal High, which is useful if you happen to be fighting um, some Elder Dragons. Now, naturally, I've told you guys that I don't think Elder Seal is particularly reliable, but, you know, every now and then it does proc, it does do a useful thing every now and then. And then the biggest downside to this particular weapon is its uh, shelling type, which is wide level 2, which is pretty much useless. There really isn't that much reason to shell at all with this gun lance, okay? Now, let's go over the rest of the build itself. We got Nergigante's Helm Alpha. You guys know I like my maximum might, so we're getting maximum might and attack boost. That's pretty much a no-brainer. We got the Uragon Male Alpha. This is for the Part Breaker. We're going to get Part Breaker Tier 2. And we're going to actually get max part breaker on this build, and I will tell you guys why. Then we got the Kaiser Van Braces for the weakness exploit level 2. We got Nergigante's Coil to get ourselves that sweet attack boost level 2. We got Nergigante's Greaves to fully increase um, the maximum might. And then we have Attack Charm Tier 3 to get ourselves a uh, maximum attack boost. Taking a look at the decoration side of things, we got a critical jewel on the Nergigante Greaves beta. That is because uh, this particular gem is actually optional. You can put whatever you want, but since we're going to be critting so often, I figured, hey, might as well get a little bit of attack of uh, critical boost in there. Then we got the tenderizer jewel on Nergigante coil beta in order to get maximum weakness exploit. Kaiser Vambris's alpha get the attack jewel in order to max out our attack boost. And then on the Uragan male alpha, we're putting in a dragon jewel. Now, this is optional. I just figured, hey, let's go ahead and cap the dragon damage as well while we're here, because why the hell not? And then again, Nergigante helm alpha, also another uh, dragon jewel to really max out that dragon damage. We're actually a little bit above the cap, but it's okay. I mean, these two gems, you can replace them with whatever you want, really. Like, you might want uh, speed sharpening, but to be honest, this weapon actually has pretty good blue sharpness, so you don't have to worry about sharpening that much, so this is just really up to personal preference. Maybe you want a little bit extra life, get some vitality jewel in there, whatever you want. And then in the Eradication Flame, we have Destroyer Jewel 2 to max out Part Breaker. Now, with the finished build, you guys can see that we have full-on attack boost, we have level 3 weakness exploit, level 3 part breaker, level 3 maximum might, 
level two dragon attack, which like I said is optional, and critical boost level one, like I also said, is also optional. We also have haste and recovery, but to be completely honest, I don't really rely on that particular set bonus that much. It just happened that way because those were the parts that I wanted to use on the set anyways, so I ended up also getting the haste and recovery uh, bonus in there. So, you know, it's a pretty solid build when it comes to dishing out melee DPS, as you guys can clearly see from the footage in the background, and it's just all about melee. There really isn't that much science in this build. This is just a build where you just go up to a monster, beat his face inside out, and just have fun doing it. The cool thing about it is that it provides a bit of a different playstyle for the Gunlands. So, in a way, it doesn't feel quite like a Gunlands, but at the same time, it's got that familiar Gunlands move. I think it's going to be very situational to people that are going to enjoy this build and are not going to enjoy this build. Like, I just like bringing it out every now and then. You know, if I'm a little bit tired of the usual just, like, shelling combos, I'm just like, okay, let's, let's bring out Lucille and just beat the crap out of somebody. What do you guys think about this build? Let me know in the comment section below. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Take it like a trick.